Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14, which is in the insert in your bulletin. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we shall be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells, dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. Please pray with me. Holy One, whatever we face, we can know that you accompany us through it all. If people condemn us for telling your great and gracious love, we can know that you are there. It is in you that we are reassured of hope, of deliverance, and of your steadfast love in all times and places. In you, we are welcomed and embraced. We are your people and receive your mercy. In your home, in you, we find a home and know your love. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It's likely that each of us, and I mean each of us, all of people, all humanity, at certain points in our life, lives contemplate physical death, facing the end of life, maybe because of something we feel inside ourselves, maybe because of our relationships with others. Some may do it with a calm awareness that it's inevitable for all of us to die. Some may be aware that death is likely coming soon for whatever reason. Some people face it with great fear because it does carry with it the unknown. Even if you are assured of eternal life, death itself, that doorway, is scary for some. Some might see it as a welcome after a time of pain. And some may not ponder it as much because it seems a long way away. This part of John's gospel is unique to John. This part of John's gospel happens on the night before Jesus is killed. So I'm guessing that what was on Jesus' mind was his end. Things were coming to that point. After Jesus washed their feet on that Thursday night, he began what we've come to call the farewell discourses. They're long speeches about big theological things, big important thoughts. As he prepares his disciples for his death, for moving on without him. And sometimes you get the idea that there's an understanding of their, um, the risk that they will face after his death. Our text today is the first discourse where he described his father's house as a place with many rooms. And that though he was leaving, he would return and take them there. According to one Jewish writer, this might be a reference to um, 
what is known as a hecalot in Judaism, or a palace's storytelling tradition. These stories tell of a seer visiting a heavenly realm and exploring its different rooms. Kind of a mystical experience that someone might have of going to see God and see the rooms and the palace and the places that were there. Jesus also re refers to his father's house as the temple, like in John 2.16, and that he is the way and one way there. Now we need to remember that Jesus, when Jesus speaks of the way, he isn't referring to a route to a physical location. Instead, in John's gospel, Jesus um, presents a broad and open, caring love and affection for the whole of humanity. When he speaks of the way, he's simply talking about himself and how he points toward God. This is the way. He does speak of other sheep that don't belong in the sheep pen. He talks about how he's come to save the world, not condemn it. And in those early years, and John's gospel is a little later than the other few gospels, in those early years, it was safer for Christians to call themselves followers of the way rather than followers of any one person, even Jesus, because it kind of made it a little bit simpler um, to avoid uh, death, I guess. By calling himself the way, Jesus didn't renounce or attack Judaism. He was criticizing religious leadership who created barriers and sometimes impossible standards for people to follow or who created rigid rules instead of trying to meet human need. Jesus' criticisms of people are, who are more concerned about rules and proving that God, proving that they are more worthy of God's attention was what he was criticizing in most cases. Jesus was speaking about that kind of person in any time, and in particular his time. As one author puts it, that critique would seem to be cautionary for any religious tradition and leaders in any age, including current Christian communities who have become lost by trying to follow the way as an exclusive place. So the way is a person, not a path, not a particular place. In Christianity, we recognize that Jesus is the embodiment of an abundant and flourishing life in connection with the Holy One and with creation. It's a way of being on the earth as in heaven. The way is truth. The way is life. The way is an infinite invitation to a new life transformed. The way isn't really about getting to a destination. It's committing to following Jesus on a road, on a pathway, on a life. And because each of our lives is unique, even in just small ways, each of us follow the way in our own particular way. We're walking this way in a spirit, as a spiritual road. John is a spiritual gospel. There's a lot of um, pointing toward things beyond the earthly realm. In this day of globalization, when the world seems so big and so small at the same time, we're aware that we're connected to people we can't see more than maybe in hundreds of years past. So it's helpful to think of things maybe on a more spiritual level, um, but globalization can make us feel both closer and farther away from everyone else in the world. It can make us feel like things are falling apart because we know about so many bad things in the world that we might not have known before now. We're constantly in contact with the entire world of races and cultures that we may not completely understand. If we think about it, the world becomes scarier and stranger, but the way can anchor us, center us, ground us, root us, challenge us to love one another, love our neighbors here as well as everywhere else. The way makes us realize that the hugeness of our connection is a reason instead of fear for joy and celebration 
for gratitude and thanksgiving. The way, if we think about it that way, is the love that we actually need. Jan Richardson's poem, Blessing with Many Rooms, opens our eyes and hearts to the way, the blessing, the presence that we seek. As you step inside this blessing, we wish to tell you it is large enough for you to lie down in. Or, though it may not look it, small as it is upon this page, you can curl up in this blessing with a cup of tea and a good book beside the window here just behind you that faces east. Likewise, it is true, though you might not have paused long enough to notice, that this blessing is big enough for a table. Quite a sizable one can be accommodated where your guests will want to linger far into the night. And if they desire to stay, you will find that through this door, did you not see it before, there are rooms in plenty where they can lay their heads and stretch out with abandon in their dreaming sleep. One room, many rooms. In this blessing, it is all the same. The point is that there is space enough, enough to make a life, a home, enough to make a world, enough to make your way toward the one who has made this way for you. On this night that the disciples were facing the unknown, when Jesus was facing a great fear and a lot of pain, the disciples needed assurance, needed to know that the way was unfailing love, not division or hatred or fear. And we can know, too, that the way isn't about space, big or small, the space is as big as it needs to be or as small as it needs to be. But it's really about how we move within our lives and our life of faith, how we reveal and share love, how we care and reach out in compassion, how we give and receive compassion in our connections to one another, in all of the one another's, anywhere and everywhere around the world. To the glory of the Holy One, author, way, and compassion. Amen.